Sam Zell has built a multi-billion dollar fortune investing in real estate, but also energy and emerging markets. And he's the author of the new book, Am I Being Too Subtle? And I have the book right here. Sam, it's great to have you here. Welcome to the street. My pleasure. All right, so you've done so much. You have exposure to so many different businesses. What are you trying to accomplish with this book? Well, first of all, people have been uh, encouraging me to write a book forever. And uh, I think I probably started by not taking them seriously. <laughs> and then maybe as a result of getting old, I decided that it was time to put some of my thoughts in writing. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to write an autobiography. What I really wanted to write was what I wrote, yeah. which is a series of principles and ideas, you know, described by using real life stories. Mm -hmm. And I know your business is so much more than real estate, but since our president <coughs> is in real estate, let's start there. What do you think of President Trump's tenure in office so far? I think that President Trump has an extraordinary opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've had eight years of kind of an anti-business administration mm -hmm. with very little representation uh, from the business community. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that was a contributor to President Trump winning. Hmm. Uh, I think the position he's in is that he's following eight years of excessive regulation and whereas the previous administration spent a trillion dollars on a theoretical stimulus bill that produced no stimulus, hmm. I think President Trump has a similar stimulus opportunity hmm. but without the debt because he can achieve that goal by deregulation. He started down that path, and uh, I think it's very encouraging for our country that he's doing that. All right, another reason for his win, though, would you agree with this, was the, the nationalist kind of rhetoric that he had during the campaign. Now, in the book, you say, quote, to me, everything is connected. I believe that globalization provides more opportunity than threat. And I think many Trump supporters would disagree with you. What do you say to those people? I'm sure there are a lot of other things that they would disagree with me on. You know, the book is uh, dedicated to immigrants, hmm. uh, which I think is a critical part of, uh, you know, why our country is exceptional and why it has achieved as much as it's achieved. So all I'd say is that I'm not a doctrinaire anything. Hmm. Uh, the book represents my thinking and what has driven me and motivated me throughout my life. All right, and speaking of immigration, we know President Trump is vowing to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, but I think what people <coughs> would find interesting is that you actually finance the only bridge along the U.S.-Mexico border. How did that happen? Well, I like to tell people that for years I lied to them <laughs> and told them I had a bridge to sell them, <laughs> but I really didn't. But now I have one, and, uh, you know, I have, I have friends and co-partners from Mexico. Uh, this is something people have talked about for many years because the Tijuana airport is right on the border. Uh, and uh, we decided to see if it could be done. And it got done. And this year, we'll have two million people cross hmm. our walking bridge from the U.S. to Mexico and from Mexico back to the U.S. Do you think the wall ever gets built? Uh, I'm not that smart. <laughs> all right, now, you've done deals all your life. What is your advice to President Trump on tax reform? Because as you know, companies are sitting on you know, well over a trillion dollars of cash overseas. They don't want to bring it back to the U.S. under the current tax structure. Well, I think that um, just, I think that the U.S. being the only country in the world that taxes all of your income everywhere, uh, and that's one of the things that tax reform is supposed to fix. Uh, obviously, it would also fix uh, the repatriation question. Mm. But clearly, it makes no sense for a company like Apple to have two and a half billion, two and a half trillion dollars, I think, of cash. Uh, yeah, 250 uh, billion. Yeah, 250 million dollars of cash sitting offshore, mm. not contributing to our economy because we have a punitive system for re repatriating the money. Mm this notion that tax cuts would pay for themselves through economic growth over time. What do you say to people who are skeptical of that mm. idea? Well, you know, there's two uh, approaches to the issue. Mm. Uh, 
you know, there's the people who believe in dynamic scoring, which in effect means when you look at the assessment mm -hmm. of a potential tax cut or a potential regulatory change, you have to include in your thought process what impact that will have on the economy. Mm -hmm. Just like every time we've cut capital gains tax, revenue has increased. So to cut capital gains tax and then pretend revenue won't increase doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know dynamic scoring is only logical and you gotta be careful you don't get too extreme. All right, now when it comes to the markets, you've you know, started many successful IPOs over your career. What do you make of where we are in stocks right now? Obviously, it's been an incredible run since the November election. We're also seeing the volatility index, the VIX, at a 24-year low. Uh, do you think stocks have run up a bit too much here? Um, I'm much more of an expert on the economy yeah. than I am on the stock market, per se. Yeah. Uh, there have been many times when I thought the stock market was too high mm. and I was proven wrong. Mm. And there are other times when I thought it was, you know, too low and I've been proven wrong. So I'm not sure I'm an expert on the stock market. I think the economy, uh, although probably last November, October, uh, I suggest that we were in the eighth inning. Mm. Uh, I think President Trump's election creates the, the likelihood of extra innings. Mm. All right, that's important, so we'll be watching that. But you are an expert on real estate, and in the book you talk a lot about the sale of equity office for $39 billion about 10 years ago, right before the market crashed. What is your take on New York City real estate? Are we due for another crash? I don't know about the word crash, mm -hmm. but we're certainly due for adjustment. Mm -hmm. And I think that adjustment has already begun to occur in New York real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of the broader commercial real estate space, obviously it's been a bloodbath in the retail sector, right? Macy's, JCPenney closing hundreds of stores. Do you think that will have an impact on commercial real estate or will they be, they be able to find other tenants? I doubt that they can find other viable tenants, other tenants that will generate the kind of traffic that a Macy's or a Sears uh, had historically created. There's a reason why they paid almost no rent because their, go their role was to generate traffic. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, they've stopped generating traffic. So that makes their very cheap rents very expensive. All right, I want to shift now and talk about the media industry because you took control of Tribune Company back in 2007, and you were very open in the book about the struggles you faced. But of course, Tribune Media was sold to Sinclair, just was announced on Monday. Obviously, the company is much different than when you were involved with it. Knowing what you know about the business, why wasn't Tribune able to thrive on its own? Well, I think you've got to start by <coughs> just looking at the revenues of the print side. Mm. Uh, we underwrote the Tribune investment, assuming that the revenues would continue to decrease by about 6% a year. Mm. In the first month, we, after we closed, they fell 30%. If you have an operating leverage business like print and, it, and your revenue falls 30%, nobody is smart enough or good enough to fix that. Do you have any regrets though or things you would do different throughout your tenure at Tribune? I probably have always thought that there were things I could do different, whether it be a Tribune or anywhere else. Uh, I think that if the same set of circumstances existed today, would I do the deal again? Mm -hmm. I think the risk reward suggests that I would. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, probably with the same result. Mm -hmm. But I think the basic decision we made in making that investment was that Yes, there was significant risk, but that the potential reward, if we got there, was well worth it. You've done so much, you own so much, I can't imagine you're going to be buying anything else anytime soon. I mean, what's next for you? I don't know. I'm a professional <laughs> opportunist. So what I buy and what I participate in oftentimes is very much a result of what occurs external to my world. But are you going to be selling anything anytime soon? 
Uh, we've been more a seller in the last five years than we've been a buyer. And why is that? Our perception of price value, mm. uh, you know, that's, that's the ultimate decision you make every day. And every day you're not a seller, you're a buyer. Mm. And every day you're not a buyer, you're a seller. I want to end on this. Uh, for young people who are going to pick up this book and read it, especially as we enter college graduation season, what is your advice to them? Um, in many respects, uh, the motivation for writing the book is the fact that um, I do about 30 or 40 speeches a year. Mm. And at least half of those are on college campuses or to young people. Mm. And inevitably, at the end of my speech, somebody raises their hand and said, wow, uh, you've really done great. But you had an opportunity to do that when there were all these great opportunities. Mm. What should I do? And I laugh and I say, number one, everybody asks that same question because everybody always looks at someone who's achieved and done a lot and said, I couldn't possibly do that or the opportunities aren't there. This is a book that's full of opportunities where I took advantage of them. I hope that the people who read this book, and that's who I wrote this for, uh, are able to look at their own world and say, wow, that's opportunity. I need to take advantage of it. Right. Maybe it's not real estate, but maybe it's maybe tech it's or artificial estate, intelligence. It's tech. It's any number of mm. things. But what it says there over and over again is, there's an opportunity, make a difference, take advantage of it, sense of urgency, make it happen. All right, well, it's important advice from Sam Zell, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Thank you. And again, the book is Am I Being Too Subtle? All right, thanks everybody for watching. I'm Scott Gam, and this is The Street. <laughs>